Hello and welcome to this stock analysis blitz for Argo blockchain. Before I start this video, please remember that I'm just doing these videos for fun as a hobby and always speak to a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Argo blockchain are a Bitcoin miner and they were listed on AIM in 2018. Thanks to my subscriber, Steve Rogers, who suggested I look at this company. Now, after listening on AIM in 2018, they got a NASDAQ listing in 2021. And we can see a massive spike up in their share price around then. This, I think a lot of that is getting access to all the crazy capital over at NASDAQ, which then also coincided with the price of Bitcoin mooning in 2021. But we see that whilst the price of Bitcoin then stayed elevated, as around the end of 2021, the share price of Argo blockchain at that second peak of the Bitcoin price was actually almost half of what it had been in that initial pump. And so although Argo blockchain 10x during that initial pump, what we see here overall is a pump and dump pattern. There was a lot of crazy money there. And what you can say for starters is you can't invest in Argo blockchain as a way of speculating on the price of Bitcoin. The Argo blockchain share price really has a lot more to do with Bitcoin mining. And so the first thought that comes to mind with Argo blockchain is why invest in Argo blockchain when you could just go onto an exchange and buy some Bitcoin instead. But let's have a look at what Argo blockchain do. We see the Argo blockchain have these Canadian mining rig facilities and these are linked up to hydroelectric power stations so they get quite cheap electricity from there and then last year they completed building this Helios facility in Texas so the Helios facility is a purpose-built Bitcoin mining facility built out there in the desert in Texas they use relatively cheap electricity from nearby solar power and it's actually a state-of-the-art facility using this immersion technique for keeping the Bitcoin mining rigs cool. And in 2022, they bought 20,000 Bitmain machines, plus a load of Intel's new block scale ASIC chip in order to load up this state-of-the-art facility. And you can see here their hash rate and how after building this Helios facility, their hash rate is now up there at 3,000 petahash. So the best place to work out how they operate as a company from Bitcoin mining is to look at their annual report. Now for 2022, I've only got half year data and that year was a total disaster zone as well, which I'll come into later. But for simplicity, I'm going to take a look at the 2021 full year numbers to give us an idea of how a Bitcoin miner operates as a company in terms of their finances. So in any given year, they mine a certain amount of Bitcoin and they sell a lot of that. And that comes in their, that comes in their income statement as their revenues. This is the Bitcoin they've sold, which was 74 million in 2021. Any Bitcoin that they don't sell then goes on the balance sheet as digital assets in their current assets. And as you can see from the Bitcoin they didn't sell, they ended up with about 81 million in Bitcoin stored as digital assets on their balance sheet. Of course, from this revenue of 74 million, they then had to use that for various purposes. They actually did take on, I think it was 30 million in debt as well that year. But then whatever's left over after they've done all that spending will go onto their balance sheet as cash, which they ended up with 11 million. So of that Bitcoin that they sold, they only had to spend 22 million as direct costs, which is the energy costs mainly of running those mining rigs, plus the 8 million operating costs. All the other things were actually relatively inconsequential that year, but they actually also have to invest into new mining rigs if they want to build their business. They had as trade receivables 63 million which is mining rigs they'd bought, but, not, but which hadn't been delivered yet, uh, after which they'll go down in property, plant and equipment. That kind of financially explains to me how this company operates. 
but some of you may prefer that visually. So they mined about 150 millions worth of Bitcoin, stored some of that, but then sold some of that to generate cash. And, that's, and that goes down as their revenues. They actually also took on some new debt. They stored 10 million of cash, but then they used all the rest of that for, for the direct costs of running the rigs, mainly electricity costs, the general operating costs of 8 million, and they chose 63 million to buy new rigs. Problem really as a potential investor is that there's so many moving parts. You're taking a gamble on what the Bitcoin price itself will do. Now, one problem that arises here is then that because they store a lot of Bitcoin as part of their business model, then whether the price of Bitcoin goes up or down, that will then have a crazy effect on their overall net income. So 2021 was a fairly stable year. But as you can see, when it came to 2022, because of the price, because the price of Bitcoin went down a lot, it ended up with crazy fluctuations in their net income with them taking a massive loss. And then overall, there's just so many, there's just so many moving parts that you've got to think about if you want to invest in this company. There's a Bitcoin price itself, plus then there's mining difficulty. So according to the Bitcoin protocol, mining difficulty can increase or decrease, meaning that for every amount of energy you put in, you might get more or less Bitcoin out. But again, that's another factor that then makes it hard to get a hold of trying to understand this company's prospects. And then on top of that, you have electricity costs, which as they go up or down, again, it's another factor. And then you have transaction fees on the Bitcoin network. So there's just a lot of different moving parts that make this company even more speculative than it would be if it was just based on the Bitcoin price. Now, unfortunately, 2022 was a total disaster. Now, I've only got the half year results to go on. So these numbers are very crude. Please take them with a pinch of salt. But based on their half year numbers, well, first of all, we know that the uh, because the price of Bitcoin went down, they're looking at a serious loss in their books there because of the uh, change in value of the Bitcoin they held. So as you can see here where I am is at like the end of 2022 and the half year was reported here in August. So quite clearly, these numbers are actually uh, probably fairly accurate for the full year based on looking at that chart and the drop in value in Bitcoin over 2022 has led to some serious impairments for this company. And so their net income is a total nightmare. Plus, in order to build this sparkling facility, that meant they had to take on loads of debt. And we've got around 70 million there in debt now, including the bonds in there that was reported at half year, plus 45 million of current debt. So they found themselves in a situation in 2022 where they had invested all that money to build this great new facility at Helios. But then the Bitcoin price had crashed and they found themselves pretty much on the verge of bankruptcy because they had 44 million of current debt, but less than that in current assets. So, so from these basic numbers, this company looks extremely distressed. And so that explains why the, their share price is so low here, even though the Bitcoin price was still twice as high as where this whole story started. And then on top of that, their, electric, their electricity costs increased enormously because of the energy crisis, which apparently does still affect the renewables prices they had to pay. And I've put here the mining margins that they're reporting. And in 2022, the mining margins dropped from actually 71% around the time of the annual report to then later last year, because of the because of the energy crisis, uh, because the cost of the electricity went up and also actually because they weren't allowed to operate at times because of blackouts and stuff in the local area because of the energy crisis, their mining margin reduced. And actually it was quite often about 20 percent on average, let's say about 25 percent. 
Ada, I noted that uh, around November, December last year, they reported it had rised up to perhaps 30%, but still a serious drop in their mining margin because of the increased electricity costs. So this company has serious doubt about around how profitable it could be, perhaps even at higher Bitcoin prices. And then we see that this huge debt has become a, a real nightmare. And, you know, let's face it, they look here on the verge of bankruptcy. Now, moving forward to February 2023, and their chief technical officer has stepped down. Their CEO has stepped down as well. And what they've done is they actually sold their Helios facility to Galaxy Digital for 65 million. You know, they were desperate for cash, as we see. And so they've averted bankruptcy by at least selling this facility to he to Galaxy Digital for 65 million. Now, under the deal, they actually get to keep, Argos actually get to keep the mining rigs at this facility. But they now have to give, obviously, a certain amount of their profits to Galaxy Digital. But the bottom line is, we have to wait for the full year results to come out, which won't be for a couple of months. But based on this data and the knowledge that they're having to sell their facility and stuff, they are highly distressed at the moment. So I have to look into what's going, what's gone wrong with their mining margin. Obviously, we know electricity prices were a problem and also having to do shutdowns were a problem. But actually, the other big problem for them was network difficulty. Now, with the Bitcoin network, there's a network difficulty that's set, which is how much energy you have to put in in order to mine a certain amount of Bitcoin. And as we can see, throughout 2022 and right up to now there's been a serious increase in the network difficulty so that means that on top of the higher energy costs they're able to mine less bitcoin for all the energy they used using the same machines and in fact the network difficulty seems to have doubled over 2022 now here i'm at the university of cambridge Bitcoin electricity consumption index and here I think gives part of the answer as to why as to why the network difficulty increased and that's because there's been more people mining Bitcoin and what happened was actually in May of 2021 China banned Bitcoin mining and then the US actually became the area where there was the most Bitcoin mining going on and this actually then coincided with Argo blockchain sweet spot in 2021 because there is a higher Bitcoin price plus because China banned Bitcoin mining then the network difficulty drops to account for that and so they were able to make some decent money but what's happened is people started mining in China again plus there was all the mining that moved over to Kazakhstan whilst in the US perhaps jumping on that opportunity there you've got loads more people building mining rigs. So the situation now is you've got more people than ever mining Bitcoin in the US. Plus you've got all this Bitcoin mining has come back in China and Kazakhstan. And this for me is a flaw in the Argo blockchain business model because Argo blockchain, they're in a free and fair market where they're having to buy electricity off people. Whereas the situation in Kazakhstan and mainland China and Russia look as well. Here, it's kind of like, in many cases, it can be local gangsters who are basically getting their electricity for free because they're stealing it from the local people. Plus that's cheaper electricity anyway, being burned at coal power stations. So you've got a free market situation that Argo blockchain are competing in against people who aren't operating in a free market. And so that is a serious flaw, I think, because how can Argo blockchain compete with these people the where they're essentially stealing the electricity or it's at or it's been generated in coal power stations which can operate much cheaper than renewables. Now before I go on to my summary, there is one glimmer of hope 
for any Argo blockchain shareholders. And that glimmer of hope lies in Bitcoin transaction fees. Now, back in 2017, the Bitcoin blockchain became full because people used to use it for actually uh, buying and selling stuff. And the consequence of that was the uh, B Bitcoin transaction fees went up. So you had the hard fork forming Bitcoin Cash and then Bitcoin BTC, which you segwit to lower the usage of data on the blockchain. And as we can see, the transaction fees then dropped quite a lot. And they also introduced a new feature called Taproot, which uh, then additionally meant that the uh, use of Bitcoin for making transactions used less disk space, if you like, on the uh, blockchain. And so we see the uh, transaction fees here are really low compared with what they used to be. But if we look at the average block size, we see that it's massively shot up. We see that it's massively shot up since January this year. And the reason for this is this new thing called ordinals. So some people might know about NFTs, which were on the shit coins. That was things like these, these strange apes and crypto punks. But all they were were images that people were putting onto the Ethereum blockchain. And it's kind of analogous to base people trading baseball cards, actually, or something like that. You know, a total kind of mania bubble. But what's happened is people have worked out how to do this now on the Bitcoin blockchain. In fact, they're better than the NFTs because with all the shitcoin stuff, the image wasn't actually encoded on the blockchain. It was only a link to a centralized database access for a website that was encoded on the blockchain but with bitcoin ordinals you can now store any image permanently on the blockchain and of course with bitcoin being a decentralized blockchain with so much network effect and energy invested in sustaining it the storing of images on the bitcoin blockchain just completely dwarfs any of this nft stuff that's been going on historically now, I think it's great that you'll be able to store images and also all kinds of other data. So think banking records or think obituaries or, you know, there's just so much. It is great that you can now store images on the Bitcoin blockchain. I think, though, that the value is overhyped massively, just like it was with the NFTs. It's kind of analogous to when people first started using the Internet and domain names got massive valuations well above what they'd ever be worth. It's a very similar thing. But regardless of that, this is a craze that's clearly taking off. And when I look at total transaction fees, they have kind of doubled in this recent period. And with this craze that's going on, you could see them going up to where they were, to where they were around 2021 and even where they were before the introduction of SegWit. A real irony here is SegWit was introduced because the BTC people didn't want to raise the block size. However, ordinals, which were created ultimately from the introduction of this SegWit, are now going to lead to the block size limit being reached again. And so, and so the whole community is going to go full circle where they're going to have to decide whether or not they need to increase the block size again. <laughs> so that's certainly an irony. But regardless of all that, and, um, you know, regardless of all that, you know, there does seem to be a good chance that um, Bitcoin mining fees could go up quite a lot. However, please remember that I'm just presenting that insight as pure speculation. And, you know, and it's kind of more a glint of hope for someone who's holding on to their Argo blockchain. Ultimately, for me, Argo blockchain, there's just so many moving parts that I just think, why not just invest directly in the Bitcoin price? In parts, because you've got to worry about the Bitcoin price. You've got to worry about mining difficulty. You've got to worry about transaction fees. And you've got to worry about electricity costs. And this problem where 
Argo blockchain have to buy their electricity, whereas in other parts of the world, people are mining Bitcoin using effectively free electricity by bribing local government officials or using coal power stations. There could possibly be a moment to go in based on that, based on that theory, but I don't think the time to invest in that would be now. It would be, it would be once we have the better data and a clearer trend on where transaction fees are going. But apart from that, as a kind of muse really for me in a few months, in terms of this analysis goes, I'm definitely not interested in investing in Argo blockchain. They're heavily distressed. There's too many moving parts. And why not just buy Bitcoin instead using a, you know, using an exchange? Because then you've only got one highly uncertain variable to worry about, which is the price of Bitcoin itself. So that completes my video on Argo blockchain. I hope you enjoyed this video and play safe out there, folks. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up.